Hi guys, John with you again and it's time for another unboxing as somebody says recently there uh, I seem to be knocking them uh, out as fast as uh, I can't remember exactly what he said but he said uh, I'm sort of building them very very fast um, yeah I suppose I am to a certain degree when you get kits that don't really have many parts I build them pretty fast uh, when it comes to stuff that I know, you know, like armor, I build them pretty fast. When it comes to jets and planes and things, I take it a bit slower. Don't know what I'm doing, so, you know, take your time. But uh, this one is going to be a quick build wise. Um, like the title says, it's, uh, it's the West German tank, the Leopard A4. And it's the Leopard 1. Okay, the Leopard 1 A4, not the Leopard 2 A4. The Leopard 1 was the, uh, and the A4 on the le on the uh, Leopard 1 was the last uh, variant of the Leopard, uh, the Leopard 1. Um, it had the new tank with, uh, had the new turret with the uh, modular armor and all that kind of thing. And it's classic um, Cold War. Yeah, classic NATO Cold War tank. Um, it was originally envisaged that the Germans and the Americans and all those would work together and come up with a with a tank, um, and the French were involved in it as well. And things just went, no, we're not going to work together. The Germans came up with the Leopard. The French had the AMX thirty, I think it was, and the Americans then had the uh, the M the M sixty pattern. So. This is the German one. Um, a lot of other countries decided to use it. I think the Canadians used it. I know that they use the Leopard the 2. Whether they use the Leopard 1 or not, I'm not 100% sure. So don't quote me on that. Okay, don't quote me on that, but I think they did. Um, I'm sure somebody will correct me in the, um, in the comments below. And I'm always open for comments. Stick them in, however you, good or bad. Um, it's all a learning curve, unless you you know, of course, you're being nasty, and then you know, we don't want those. But there's nothing wrong with a bit of constructive criticism, okay? So the kit I'm unboxing today is this. Okay, it's from Tamiya. It's the uh, West German tank Leopard A4 from Tamiya, and it is kit number. Kit number. Kit number. Kit number. Uh, 35112 okay it's an old kit um, it was originally uh, designed and shall we say uh, first produced okay back in 1979 and um, what I know of the old Tamiya kits and I love the old Tamiya kits because they fall together fitting is there's no problem with fitting um, I'm not a sprue counter so um, whether they're sort of perfect perfect I do not know and like I said I don't care I don't care because I'm not a, I'm not a rivet counter I enjoy the build I enjoy painting weathering all that kind of thing and ending up with a nice little model for a finish okay nice little display piece um, whatever you want to do with it, build a, a diorama uh, or just have it as a standalone. Okay, this one's going to be a standalone one. Um, I'm going to go for light enough weathering. Light enough weathering on it. I, I don't want any battle damage or anything like that. Um, because from what I know, okay, again I might be wrong, correct me in the box below, but I don't think they actually ever saw action, as in, you know, uh, real action. Um, so, before without further ado, let's get on to the bench and we'll have a look at this uh, this kit. What you get in the box, what are you getting for your money? Okay. Okay, so here we have it. Here's the box. It's the uh, West German tank Leopard A4. Okay, and that's the Leopard 1. It doesn't actually say Leopard 1 because obviously when this tank came out, there wasn't a Leopard 2, <laughs> it was a Leopard 4. Leopard A4, and when this uh, came out, that was the, uh, the ultra modern uh, uh, modern tank. Okay, box art quite plain, and uh, there's no backgrounds or anything. It just gives a nice picture of the tank, um, so you can get 
you know your color options for it from it um i do know that there's a camouflage version as well you can do it gives the uh in the instructions i gives you the options for the camouflage version and of course you get your decals and everything like that for it you can also have a snorkel here okay for the deep wading um it's, it says it here in the box it's a 135 miniature series kitten number uh 35112 just says 112 there but the 35 denotes whether it's a 35th scale um, ready to assemble precision model kit uh, many accessory parts with conning tower and tank crew figure okay there's the conning tower on it um, whether I'm going to do it with conning tower or not I do not know but I will be painting it up I think you can sort of put it on and take it off if you can I'll be doing it with it um, if it's a case of you either have the conning tower on or off, I'll probably go for it off. You know, it's easier to fit on the shelf. <laughs> but if it's removable, I will uh, remove it. Okay, so that's basically the, the cover box art for it. Um, on the side here, it gives uh, another picture of the, uh, the Leopard A4. It gives the Marder and the Gepard. The Gepard is the uh, anti-aircraft version of that. Um, the Marder, as far as I know, it's an anti aircraft version as well, but it's, uh, it uses a different chassis than the uh, thing by the looks of it. Or is it the same chassis? Yeah, it, 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 it looks different because it looks like the driver's in a different spot. Um, I do not know. I do not know. But I do know that the gear part is, ba is the uh, it's same with the. Uh, the Gepard is a Leopard without the uh, with an aircraft version of the Leopard. Um, on the side here, just gives us a picture of the vehicle itself. This side then is there's the camouflage version, as I was said. It's uh, sort of a brown and green. Don't know whether I do that one or not. Uh, it comes with a figure. If you wanted to do sort of the figure standing beside, it, if you want to do it on a nice little base or something. And there we go. Okay, so it's upside down, John. I can see that. Right, so let's open the box and see what we get. So as you open the box, you'll see you've got your uh, your plastic bits and pieces. We've got a upper hull. Lower hull. Right, we'll have a shot. We'll have a close look at all these in a minute. We've got two bags of sprues, and this one here we seem to have some polycaps. Okay, they're rattling around inside. And at the back of this one, then we've got our decals, stickers, transfers, stickers. We've got the old notorious rubber band tracks. Ha 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 ha, rubber band tracks. Some people absolutely detest these. Me? I do not mind them at all. Sometimes I kind of uh, think they're a bit easier. Yeah, you can't, you can't really get the nice sag. And you, actually, you can, believe it or not, I did get sag on uh, a couple of occasions using these. Um, it's sort of, you're, you're gluing it down and you're using um, wedges to kind of keep, to get that sag into it. But yeah, I, I like the, the rubber tracks. I don't mind them at all at all. These ones are, seem to be look quite nice okay so we got our rubber tracks we get our Tamiya Tech Tips page right which gives us a little bit of handy info that most of us already know about but if you don't it's handy to know uh, cut your pieces off don't break them off clean them off afterwards a um, couple of other little uh, tools and accessories needed okay using glues there we go again cutting them off using a tweezers sending pieces hints for spraying all that kind of thing handy little sheet if you're you know, getting back into the uh, into the hobby very very handy indeed Right, as with all these old Tamiya um, 
kits they do come with dual sets of instructions okay you get one set in uh, Japanese I presume it's Japanese okay. everything there in Japanese and we get the other one here which is in English and German right so we'll start off we'll have a quick look at the instructions I won't go into too much detail on the instructions okay but the instructions themselves little instruction meter it's a one page pull out leaflet okay it gives us a nice picture of the vehicle itself all made up it also gives us a nice little rundown there okay in English and in German run down a little bit of uh, history on the vehicle very very handy and a nice little photograph of one in use there and by the looks of it there I think there's a gepard behind it okay so the instructions starts off like most tanks start off with the wheels okay the back plate okay um, putting the wheels on attaching the back plate putting on the uh, side pieces onto the, uh, in the the main deck left and right with some uh, pioneer tools the driver's hatch some lights and uh, tow hooks that kind of thing and we've got the uh, smoke launchers the machine gun okay we have the main gun itself it's a two-piece gun with a, a one-piece end piece we've got construction of the turret uh, shows our figure there for painting of the figure uh, last of the construction of the turret there and then fitting the turret to it okay also gives us a sprue map and then we're into marking guides okay painting and marking guides we got two versions here just plain green okay all the drab being the color just different sets of numbers and number plates and uh, unit badges okay so we've got version one version two and the back then there's that camouflaged version okay and also give tells us the colors to be used in uh, painting of it we've got olive drab black white red gunmetal matte black matte brown matte flesh metallic grey and red brown but yet then again when you come over here it says the colours are olive drab and matte earth it doesn't mention matte earth there ok um, it says here flat earth camouflage is applied on an olive drab background right, so it doesn't give us the uh, colour there for the, uh, the flat earth in the mentionings of the colours anyway uh, it also says uh, build collection of Tamiya 135 scale tanks, the West German Marer, the West German uh, Flak Panzer Gepard, the West German uh, Leopard 1A1, the T62, and the, uh, the Chieftain Mark V. So that's the instruction manual. Very, very easy to follow. Very, very nicely done. So I like the fact when it's nice and easy to follow not too many steps in it or anything like that so we start with the uh, the lower hull all our suspension is already uh, in place okay so that's why you can you know you can build these literally in a couple of hours I mean I, I kind of stretched out over a couple of days I took kind of an hour and a half here and there most evenings um, and I say most evenings because some evenings I'd come up and I'd actually do nothing to sit down and look at the look at YouTube clips answer all my uh, my fan mail <coughs> yeah fan mail anyway <coughs> we got no detail on the bottom we've got holes here and by the looks of the inside of it here it was uh, originally set up as um, as the, uh, the remote excuse me remote control unit that goes into these 
Okay, and I'm sure you can get your hands and motors and all that for these. Never actually seen them myself, but I'm sure they, they are still available. If you go searching, you'll find anything, isn't that what they say? So the uh, it's nicely molded. I must admit, you know, it's a good strong plastic. Um, it doesn't go into too much detail on it on on the sides here. Then again, when you you know you're going to have your wheels covered and your return rollers on the side. You're going to have the uh, side skirts on that as well so you're not going to see many much of that anyway so it's not too hard to it's there anyway um i know if that was a modern kit all these little pieces here you'd be putting them on individually all right so that's the uh, the lower hull as i said there's no nothing underneath we got our upper hull all right um again a lot of the stuff is pre-molded on Say if you're putting it on yourself, um, detail is pretty okay. You know that's deep enough there for catching um, catching a wash, so it'll come on quite nice. Okay, there we've got our front section there with the uh, the driver's hatch. And the pieces here for the uh, engine vents there at the side. So there's our upper and our lower hull. Now, in looking at this, I mean, that's going to fit there like that. So we're going to have that, uh, that hole, these two sides wide open here. It is a common feature for um, uh, the older the older Tamiya kits. Um, the reason behind it, believe it or not, is for the remote control, so the remote, the engine and the motors inside don't overheat and melt your uh, your tank. But, um, you know, I suppose you could fill them in if you wanted to. Depends how much you're going to see or not. We'll see how uh, I go ahead with it. I do not know. I haven't decided yet. Like I said, it depends on uh, how visible they actually are or not. With the um, the side skirts on, you probably won't be able to get into sea up there, so it won't really matter too much. But uh, like I said, you'll have to watch the uh, build updates to see how we'll move on with that. Okay, so we're on now to our plastic. Okay, we've got our bags here. Staples. Careful with the staples. Make sure they don't fly off and injure a small child or something. <laughs> Right, we've got the usual poly caps. We've got a, a long strip and a short strip of poly caps. They're for the wheels. Very, very handy for the wheels because it means you can take them on and off when you're constructing it, and you can take them off then for um, for painting. So you can get them all nicely painted up quite easily. It's a uh, something that they haven't kind of um, a lot of companies haven't continued with. Which, I, it's, which is a pity because I do like the uh, I like the, the polycap idea. Okay, so we've got our turret parts here. This is spruce C. We've got the, uh, the top of the turret. Again, nicely molded. Very, very nicely molded considering the age of this kit. You know, um, there's a detail there in the back. Can you make it out from that? I can't really even see it really. Um, this is Leopard A4 1979 yep so we've got our uh, our sides our side panels there for the turret again they're very very nicely moulded ok we've got you know, deep enough panel lines there for you know when you take for taking a wash and all that they come out quite nice indeed. Right, we got some grab rails. We got some uh, protectors there for uh, the lights. I presume I'm not 100% sure as yet. We've got the uh, the front mantlet for the gun. We've got the um, fire control system thing there. I think this was one of the first tanks to actually use a fire control system. 
within it. All right, lovely little parts, nicely molded. Do a quick look over those. Okay. So as you can see, you I mean those those panel lines are nicely deep enough, nicely recessed. So when you go to when you've it all made up and you go to put on your wash, you've got nice little places for it to travel into. So they for the, those little panels will, uh, will will stick out much better. Go to our second bag. There are only two bags. Okay, not very many parts at all. Got our decals, we'll have a look at them, we'll put them down there, we'll have a look at them in a minute. Right, we'll start off here with this sprue. On this sprue we've got all our wheels. Okay. We've got all our wheels, our road wheels. And again, detail in them is very, very nice. You know, there's some modern kits coming out and the detail isn't quite as good as that. It's there, but it's very, very faint and all that kind of thing. But that that is actually very, very nice. It's got the shaping on the on the nuts and the wheels and everything. Very nice indeed. We've got our figure. Okay, it's one of those typical old Tamiya figures. Are not the best, but again, they are not bad. I've said, I've done a couple of them and I got very, very nice results out of them. I've done a couple and they got very, very bad results out of them, so every one is different. But it seems to be nice enough. I mean, there's plenty of wrinkles and things. The more these little wrinkles and creases, the better you can get the uh, figure to actually look. Okay, so we've got our uh, driver's hatch, we've got our drive sprockets, we've got our return rollers there for along the top, and I presume we have our idlers there in there as well okay they're in there somewhere right but again the detail is quite nice in those right and there's our wheels these are our idlers when I cop that from the numbers one and two and these are the the, the fronts of the idlers are slightly different right we've got our small clunchers the holders there for the idlers and for the uh, the drive sprocket so that's uh, sprue does it give a number on it use a little panel at the side telling us what sprue it is there we go sprue A wheels usually have sprue A right so there's sprue A sprue C we had earlier so therefore this must be sprue B Spruby. <laughs> okay, so we've got our side skirts. Now they look very nice. Detail on them is absolutely lovely, isn't it? Really, really nice. Okay. We've got the two of them. We've also got our gun. Again, very, very nicely moulded. Some lovely detail there on the, on the gun. Some nice moulding there on the uh, the heat shield clips. Right, we've got our engine vents. We've got that um, conning tower for the deep wading. We've got the uh, commander's hatch and the uh, loader's hatch. Little cup holes for them. We've got our tools. Wire cutters, saw, sledgehammer, shovels. Right here, then we've got uh, the gun travel lock. We've got our uh, 
MG machine gun. Got some panels and hatches. Okay. More little panels and things. We've got uh, tow hooks or lights. More towing eye hooks. They're probably for the mirrors. Those two pieces here. So the pieces are very nice. Very nicely moulded. Nicely done. And finally we've got our tracks. We did have a little bit of a look at them earlier on. But uh, if we look at the back of them. I have seen an awful lot worse I must admit. With um, with 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 uh, with tracks, I've seen them. You know, rubber tracks. That is, I'm not talking about any other type of tracks. I'm talking about rubber tracks here. I've seen them with full of ejection marks the whole way across, and little extra bits and things like that. But these are very very minimal little uh, protrusions. The front of them. We got those rubber rubber pads there. They're quite nice quite nicely done you know very nice indeed okay so there's our tracks our rubber tracks we'll see how they go and last but by no means least we've got our decals our decals our transfers and our stickers okay so we've got uh, two German crosses there all right we've got the um, this little cross here. Now what that little cross there for? I took me always wonder for what the hell that was that was at the back of vehicles. It's when you're using the dry you're not using you say your normal headlights and you're only using your blackout light. These things they don't actually shine but they'll give they're slightly reflective. Okay? No not not these ones but they're in the on the real vehicle they're slightly reflective so if they're ca traveling in a convoy the tank behind you can see the little cross and the cross is usually in the center of the tank so they know where the center of the tank in front of them is okay so that's what those are for we've our number plates there we've got our um, unit stamps these little ones here then from one to eight there are for the depths on the conning tower right and we have our individual tank numbers with a leopard in, in B or C and the 44 in the yellow thing is the uh, the weight of the vehicle okay so it's 44 tons right so there you go there's our decals and our decals explained as well so that's it lads, that's the uh, that's the unboxing. All nicely done, all finished. Again, there's the kit. It's the uh, West German tank Leopard A4, which is the Leopard 1 from Tamiya, and it's the A4 version of that, which was the last, um, the last of the Leopard 1s, okay. From that they went on then and, and we've got the tank we have now which is the Leopard 2 and I think they're up to A7 now at this point in time with the Leopard 2. So lovely kit from Tamiya, one of the good old ones. Um, love the old kits because they're not very expensive, not very expensive at all. You pick this up quite reasonably and um, I mean I can't really say very much yet because I haven't built it but looking at the plastic I uh, yeah that looks good and uh, I'm looking forward to building it let you know in the um, in, in the build series when it's all finished whether I'd recommend it or not that's another thing but um, I can't see why I wouldn't because uh, once it goes together quite nicely um, that's the main thing you know the painting is up down to you that's there's not to me that, that where that's where sort of to me it finishes and blanks off you know we've given the kit it's up to you now to paint it okay so that's it for this video lads don't forget to uh, like and subscribe subscribe to the channel if you've not already subscribed hit the bell 
by hitting the bell uh, you'll be notified of any further videos that I come up with stay tuned for the build series for this um, it should be shouldn't take too long um, knowing me I'd say what two two maybe even three weeks from start to finish okay so there we go West German tank Leopard A4 thank you for watching and don't forget on buy yourself a kit build it and enjoy it John signing off I'll catch you in the next one lads stay safe